I'm Gene Grant here in the studios of New Mexico PBS with our Line Opinion panelists. We're about to record this week's show, but before we do, we'd like to warm up by taking a turn at other issues that are on our minds. Daniel Foley is with us this week. Good to see you again. It's been a few weeks. What's been out Good there be for you? Yeah, absolutely. Always you glad know, to have you. Um, I, you know, sometimes I get digged for not being serious about mm -hmm. all this stuff, so mm -hmm. I'm going to add to that. Okay. You know, my deal is this New Mexico United and the, the soccer stuff that's going on yeah. in New Mexico. I mean, we keep turning these games on. We're beating MSL teams. We're beating MSL teams in major markets. We're beating MSL teams in major markets not only by the score and That's by right. our play, but in our attendance. That's right. I mean, it's just it's off the charts yep. what these guys are doing. And I think kudos to them. You know, everybody has said that we can't support college football. We can't support college basketball. That's right. We can't support professional sports. Well, apparently we can support the right professional sports. That's right. And, um, you know, I, I think obviously soccer is a good good makeup for our community. Mm -hmm. But I also think kudos to the people that own the team, the yeah. work that they've done, their community involvement. And one of the things that I've been harping on, we've talked about this on the show and at ad nauseum, you want to put people in the seats, you got to get local kids playing. Thank and you. The New Mexico United team is winning with New Mexico kids playing on that team. Mm -hmm. It's not the majority of the team, but when you can show up and watch a kid that you watch play high school soccer, college soccer, and now they're playing professional soccer and winning, that's how you build it. Hopefully, the universities in this town are taking notice and around the state that if you want to put people in the seats and have a chance to win, New Mexico kids really aren't that bad. Well said, sir. Well said. You know, interesting, I'm thinking about Mr. Fishbein, uh, the UNM soccer coach just left yep. his position. Some folks are talking about him maybe perhaps finding an avenue with the professional team. And I know you meant to say MLS when you're saying MSL, but that's yeah, MLS. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm with you, you, brother. That's all right. We got your back. <laughs> Didi, what's been going on out there in your world? What have you been seeing? Well, one of the things that I think has been interesting in the past two weeks is the emerging role of our state land commissioner. Ooh, yeah. uh, Stephanie uh, Garcia Richard is really, um, I think, um, giving that office some contours that it hasn't had in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, her, first, um, her first foray, I think, w was um, taking a stand on Chaco Canyon That's right. and the state land around uh, Chaco Canyon. I think there's 70 to 80,000 acres of right. state land in that checkerboard area, and she um, declared that <coughs> off limits to oil and gas drilling. Mm -hmm. And now, um, the past week, she has uh, come out along with other New Mexico officials, including the governor, about the um, Holtec facility on the uh, Eddy County, Eddy Lee, Eddie Lee uh, County border, and um, has said that the company has misled um, the, both the NRC, mm -hmm. the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and others um, because they said that they owned the land and no problem with oil and gas. Mm -hmm. However, actually the state is the owner of the mineral rights underneath the surface. Ooh. And so this gives her jurisdiction huh. in that area and she has uh, raised some very serious questions about this facility, which as you know, will house spent uh, nuclear right. fuel rods right. having been transported uh, from around the country at, at uh, what I think is a, gr a grave danger. Yep. It's kind of overlooked because it's kind of in the way of, uh, way back areas of our state, no offense uh, to <laughs> Roswell, <laughs> but. Um, mm -hmm. She's done it quite elegantly and quietly. She's not grandstanding no. on these things either. It's interesting, these are two big things you're talking about, and yes. we may tackle at this table in the coming weeks, but I, I agree with you. That's a very interesting little process she's put in mm -hmm. motion there. Well, I mean, it's an overlooked office. That's right. Uh, it's an independent executive. Uh, she's the first woman that has ever been in that uh, mm -hmm. office. She said she would be different yep. and focus on education. Uh, I think she's doing even more than that. Right. We'll see how that plays out. It's interesting, yeah. Laura sanchez Rave, what are you been seeing out there in your um, I just wanted to travels? add that one of my former clients, the city of Jowell, was actually one of the only communities in that area to take a stand against that facility yeah. because okay. of the nuclear um, waste that would be housed there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so what I found um, notable this week is there was a, an article in the Albuquerque Journal mm. um, that the state auditor had posted on his... Um, I don't know if it was his Twitter or on his website, his Facebook. He had posted um, a comment about the um, 
there was a comic strip that runs in the Santa Fe New Mexican I don't know if you guys heard about this but it's called Without Reservations and mm -hmm. it's a um, native artist yes, yeah. who is a, a Kiwa Pueblo artist named Ricardo Cate yeah. and this uh, this interesting um, comic uh, came out and it basically was a, uh, a native person going to a lemonade stand and the little the little uh, Bubble said, "Do you take EBT?" Right. Um, Mr. Col Colon um, dis, uh, basically posted that he didn't think it was very funny. He said, "You know, is this funny at all? You know, is is this okay?" Hashtag not funny. Huh. Um, and I think he was trying to raise the issue that it was offensive. Right. Um, it tagged Deborah Holland on it, and uh, Congresswoman Holland actually said, "Well, this is you know." Basically said something about this is the reality of a, you know this is an expression mm -hmm. you know a native a native um, artist who's uh, producing this and uh, and then so it sort of had a, a back like the not the right I think um, uh, effect that the state auditor had but it did to his credit um, create an interesting um, conversation about this issue and yes. that is you know what people take as offensive but yet if it's expression from a person that that is part of that community um, you know, is it right to criticize it? That's right. Uh, and I think that the same can be said about a variety of different That's media. Right. That's right. Um, like murals, for example, um, all kinds of things that can be done by artists. That's right. Sometimes, you know, spoken word, music, rap, you can you can mm -hmm. consider a part of that. And so because it offends other people, it kind of made me think of the Tipper Gore issue back in the day. Oh, sure. Remember when she yeah. was basically parental lyrics, right. you know, <laughs> parental advisory on all the, the hard rap? And That's it was right. like, it was kind of a very interesting updated nuance. Two live crew. Um, oh my yeah, the two live crew thing back in the day. <laughs> so you're dating yourself now. Right, right. <laughs> but I thought it was a very interesting discussion. Not yep. exactly, I think, what his intended, um, his intent was, but certainly started a conversation that I think is worthy for us to have. We have a very um, diverse community and one that um, thankfully has a, pla a place to express that. That's right. And so humor. I'm glad that at least, uh, you know, Mr. Kata is able to, to produce, you know, his his thoughts and I that. appreciate you bringing that up. We, we've had him here in studio. He sat oh, right over there and, and had a wonderful. He's a very interesting cat. He's got a really interesting point of view. He's not afraid to put it out there. And for Mr. Cologne to kind of try to work something with it, I, I, I well, agree with you. Well, I think to yeah. a lot of natives, it's smacked <clears throat> as, you know, from Mr. Cologne trying to sort of censor that or suggest that it's not That's appropriate right. to have That's that right. kind of expression. That's right. And, you know, as, as a, as a Mexican-American, for me, it made me think of Ask a Mexican. If oh, anybody's right. read that, like right. Ask a Mexican, and the, I think <laughs> the right. Alibi maybe runs it. There's that's a right. couple of different yeah. publications that have it. Yeah. Sometimes that stuff gets pretty offensive. Right. Like, but to who? But it, to that's who? Right. That's exactly, because right. it's, right. it's also very funny and it comes from a, a place of truth. That's so, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Humor can be that. I'm still stuck on the Luther Campbell reference, man. I'm just. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Michael Barrio. <laughs> Mr. Prosperity <laughs> Works. Glad to have you here. Your first. Thank you. Go around here. What's been on your mind this week? What have you been seeing out there? Um, you know. I've been doing a lot of thinking about economic development lately, especially with the um, announcement of the NBC Universal and Netflix deals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that the film industry um, having a larger presence in New Mexico is good for a variety of reasons, and mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. um, it's it's going to do a lot for our, our economy. But it's it's spurred some conversations that I've been having with um, with some economic development officers across the state mm -hmm. about how we take a, um, perhaps a more holistic view of economic development um, and you know how and how and when are we utilizing things like community benefits agreements um, how are we looking at you know tying corporate incentives to um, commitments to invest in the community mm -hmm. and then how are, are how are those investments being diversified mm -hmm. because I understand that you know bringing big business to New Mexico is, is again great for a variety of reasons one of those reasons being that it creates jobs, mm. but um, you know, from, from my view and thinking about poverty and how we address that in the state, uh, I think that um, creating jobs um, is just one small part of the equation. Mm -hmm. I think that there are a whole host of system systemic issues that mm -hmm. we need to address. Um, in addition to just creating jobs, and so I've been Good thinking a lot there. about that. Yeah, absolutely. I know you bring some experience from Los Angeles, being around that business too as part of your career. I'd be interested later on to talk to you about that as to, and a little more in depth, how you sort of see the burgeoning si situation we have here compared to what you left a few years ago. It could be kind of fun. All right, we'll have to wrap that up there. Thanks for joining us. New Mexico in Focus airs Friday night and Sunday mornings here on New Mexico PBS.